I talk a lot about education on this channel because I think that education is one of the most important drivers for prosperity, for wealth, for success. And unfortunately, here in the UK, black children, generally speaking, over many, many years, have tended to achieve near or at the bottom when it comes to different educational outcomes. And in this video, I want to talk about this in a bit more detail. I want to show you what I think are the two or three main explanations for this educational underachievement, leaving aside the ESN scandal, which I talked about in my previous video. Watch that video if you haven't already watched that. It's a very, very important video to get some context behind particularly the Black Caribbean children and their educational and social outcomes. So how can we start to explain this? What's going on? What are some of the factors that can explain why Black children achieve so much lower when it comes to attainment, particularly at GCSE and A-level? Well, the first facts, generally speaking, you can look at children who qualify for free school meals versus children who don't qualify for free school meals. Being able to qualify for free school meals means that your household, for whatever reason, the income is low or whatever, any, whatever other factors there are, can receive means-tested support from the government. So being able to get free school me meals means you don't have to pay for the food that you get when you're at school. It's seen as a proxy marker for poverty, basically. Children who are qualify for free school meals are generally speaking more likely to be living in poverty than those children who do not qualify for free school meals. So you'll see here that the blue are the children who qualify for free school meals. The green line there is the children who do not qualify for free school meals. Going back to between 2006 and 2019, while attainment for all children has generally gone up, the gap between the free school meal and not free school meal children has remained the same. So in 2019, 70% of children who do not qualify for, did not qualify for free school meals, achieved five good GCSEs, including maths and English, whereas that drops right down to th only 30% of children who do qualify for free school meals. So the question we need to ask ourselves is, could this be an explanation as to why black children, generally speaking, achieve lower educational outcomes? So this is, this is data coming from the government again, and it's looking at the percentage of children eligible for free school meals. You'll see there, I've highlighted in orange the groups that I want to look at, the black groups and the mixed groups as well, the mixed white and black Caribbean and white and black African. And you'll see there that the, the pupils that are mo the most likely to be quali to qualify for free school meals are the white traveller, Irish travellers and the gypsy Roma. It's 62% of children and 42% of children qualify for free school meals. Then you've got mixed white and black Caribbean, 35% of them, 34% of black Caribbean, 30% of other black, 27% of mixed white and black African and 27% of black African children qualify for free school meals. Another approach is to look at household income. There is a very clear correlation between the income of the household from which children come and the educational outcomes of those children. This graphic comes from the Institute for Fiscal Studies, a report called Educational Inequalities, Changes in Education Over Time, published in August 2022. And it shows here the percentage of pupils that achieved five good GCSEs. And then on, on the bottom axis there, it shows you what decile of household income the children's households were in. On the left-hand side, the decile one means that's the lowest tenth of household incomes and then on the right hand side there decile 10 is the highest tenth of household incomes. The red dots there that shows you the, the, the proportion of pupils who got five good GCSEs including English and maths. You'll see that those children who are in the lowest decile only 25% of those achieved five good GCSEs including English and maths and that goes right the way up to those who are in the seventh decile and upwards between well about 70% of those in the in the more in the households with a higher income achieved five good GCSEs, including English and maths. And a similar similar pattern there is look, you can see when you look at students who got any A or A star grade. So the question we need to ask ourselves again is, do black families potentially have lower household incomes? Well, we've talked about this in previous videos of mine, including my video on black middle class wealth here in the UK. Check that out if you haven't already looked at it. But just to confirm, black children are much more likely to come from households which are of a low income income and for whatever reason, whatever the causal connection is between low income and poor educational outcomes, it applies disproportionately to black households. There was a very important study that came out of the University of Manchester a few years ago, which looked to try and answer the question as to whether the amount of time that parents spend with their children doing homework and this, that and the other can be shown to have an impact on 
the educational outcomes of those children. So we read here from this uh, press release from the University of Manchester. The University of Manchester's Lynn Ding analysed data from the Millennium Cohort Survey of over 8,000 children in the UK at the ages of 7 and 11, recording their teachers' assessment of their progress in maths and in creative subjects and the amount of time parents spent with them on various activities. Parents' time spent helping their, fam their children with maths reading to them and going to libraries made children only a few percentage points more likely to be classed as above average or well above average by teachers. Going to bed at regular time also helped the children slightly and that's good for me to know because I'm a stickler for my children going to bed at you know consistent times every night even right now during the summer holidays I have to fight this battle with my wife and others over this point. Parents time spent on musical or physical activities with children had no effect she found however having parents with degrees or who were well off or from a high socio-economic class approximately doubled the chance of their children being assessed as above average. In a way it's, it's kind of obvious if you think about it. A, a house, first of all a household that is likely that has a higher income has a higher income because the parents are going to be working jobs that are that generate that, that bring a higher income so they're more likely to be professionals they're more likely to be managerial roles higher managerial low roles director roles all that sort of stuff they understand how university works they know what it takes to study they know what it takes to achieve highly in these things they know all about the discipline that's needed they know about the the habits that you need to develop and so on and they know the impact that going to university has had on their lives and so those parents are going to be a lot more motivated to convey all of that information to their children they're going to be a lot more motivated to pass on and transfer that motivation and that insight and that knowledge about university and school and so on because it works back isn't it if you know what it takes to get a high grade at university you will know that it starts with getting a good grade at GCSE and A levels as I've talked about in a previous video of mine about the income disparity between black graduates and graduates of most other ethnic groups so I think these are the kinds of things that we're looking at when it comes to understanding the general lower educational outcomes of black families we unfortunately our families generally speaking concentrated in the lower socio-economic brackets the ch children are concentrated in those brackets because the big elephant in the room for me relates to the household composition Looking at this data here, this comes from the Office for National Statistics in 2019. By far and away, black children are much, much, much more likely than any other ethnic groups to be living in lone parent families. 63% of black Caribbean children aged under 15, under 16, live with a, in single parent households. 62% of black other, there's a, there's a drop down there then to black African families, but still 43% of black African families are living in lone parent, black African African children rather are living in lone parent families and then 41% of mixed white and black Caribbean and then 35% of mixed white and black African children live in lone parent families and then you go over to the right hand side of this column you see how that that tails down to a small minority of white British children other white children white mixed white and Asian children Pakistani Bangladeshi and especially Indian children a small minority of those children are living in lone parent families 21% of Chinese families living in lone parent 21% of Chinese children living in lone parent families and now that's that's my basic point is what the reason why I keep going on about these data and the reason why I think it's important for us to start to really dig into that uncomfortable topic about why we have so many of our children growing up in lone parent families the reason why it's important is not just because this is some cheap stick to batter one particular part of our communities our demographics with namely either single mothers or the fathers who don't live with their children it's not to be any of those people both of those are products of the same families that we all come from and the issues that are driving this high proportion of our children to be raised in lone parent families need to be addressed by us as families working together and as communities working together i think that if we could turn it around if we could fix our families fix our relationships obviously that's not easy i don't have any special magic wand for that or silver bullet but i think i expect that if you would switch that that chart around and you you know if we could put black families down there you know where only a, a minority of black children are growing up in lone parent family households i personally think it just goes without saying that you would see the educational outcomes skyrocket anyway yeah let me know your thoughts on this topic 
As usual, there are videos, other videos that I think you'd really enjoy watching that dovetail very closely with this topic. So YouTube will recommend one here. And then I think this video here follows on very, very smoothly from the topic of this video. All right, take care. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video if you haven't already done so. My name's Eli Wananda. Take care and I'll speak to you soon. Peace.